Welcome to Hatha Core and Restore. This is a three-part practice where we will do a little bit of Hatha work to lengthen and strengthen our body. Stabilize with a bit of core to just keep everything pulled in and refined. And then some restorative work to help unwind and release the tightening and the strengthening that we've done. So go at your own pace and if you have props, use your props. If you're using your body weight, that's great as well. So we'll start seated. <clears throat> Softening through the face and the jaw. Letting the inhales come in through the nostrils. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Bring your hands to the inner heart center and lift your sternum into your thumbs. Take another collective breath in. Sighing it out. Inhale to Om. the hands down to your thighs. Good. From there, come up to your hands and your knees. And we'll take our soft block to the left, and we'll take our foam block to the front on either edge of the mat. Once you come to your hands and your knees, go ahead and we'll find a downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips back and away, and start to pedal up through the feet. Claw them out with your fingertips, feeling that lift in the palms and the wrists. De-weighting through the wrists to help the shoulders reach back and away a bit further. Inhale, come forward into a plank position. Exhale, roll back into your downward dog. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, on back. Waking up the spine, rippling forward one vertebra at a time. Exhaling, reaching the hips back once more. Good. From there, reach your knees to the floor. Shift your weight to your block on underneath the left knee. Step your right foot forward and take your hands to your blocks. <clears throat> Inhale, hands can stay on your blocks or come to your hands on your thigh. You can bring your hands to heart center, lifting through your sternum, through your torso. And bring your first few breaths. Draw your ribs in, so you feel your belly firming in a little bit, and then bring your shoulders back, yeah? Nice, and then sit more through your right thigh, if there's space for that. One more breath here. On the breath out, exhale, face your palms to your blocks, set your left foot to your right foot, forward, forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. From there, step your right foot back. Place your block underneath your right knee and your blocks back beneath your hands. From there, finding your way into your low lunge on the second side. Inhaling and exhaling. Walk your hands up to your left thigh, pressing the hands down to lift your chest up a little bit higher, breathing into the front of that right hip and quadricep. the arms up a little bit, go ahead, bring them into cactus shape, gathering your shoulders more on your back and sitting more into your left thigh. Good. 
Exhale, release your hands down towards your blocks. Lift your right knee off the ground. Let your blocks come off at the side. Plant your palms, step back, high plank. You can always lower to your knees. And whatever you choose for yourself here, I'll demonstrate from my knees. Coming forward, lower down, chest and chin. Lengthening the legs back behind you, tops of the feet come down to the ground. And lift yourself up, lengthening forward into cobra pose. Exhale, tucking the toes, pressing up to your hands and your knees, tabletop position, or downward facing dog. <clears throat> Inhale, reach your right leg back to your three-legged dog, bending the right knee and stepping the right hip on top of the left hip. From there, reach up to your hips, pushing up to your hands, and really feel that nice stretch to the right front of the thigh, hip crease, even maybe up through the right armpit. On your exhale, bring your right knee in towards your nose. And back up to three-legged dog. Exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. And back. Exhale, bring your right knee to the left. And back and away. Exhale, bring your knee into your nose and step between the palms once again. From there, we lower the left knee down to the ground. Reach the arms up. You can come overhead or bring your hands to heart center. Take a breath in here. And a breath out. Release your palms to either side, stepping the right knee back to the left knee. Come forward into your knees, lower your chest and your chin down to the ground. Inhale into Cobra. Exhale, lower down. Tuck in the toes, this time pressing up to your high plank position and then reaching back to downward dog. Inhale, reach your left leg back. Bend your left knee, stack your left hip, open the right hip, and opening up through those left toes, extending up to the hands, stretching out the left side of your waist. Bring your left knee back to neutral and hug your left knee in towards your chest. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, bring your left knee to your left elbow. And come on back. Bring your left knee towards your right elbow. And bring it back. Bring your knee towards your chest. Look between the palms, step the left foot between the hands. Good, from there, lower the right knee down. If you have that block handy or a pillow, Place the block underneath. Good. From there, take your hands up towards your thigh, or again, maybe cap the shape for your arms. <clears throat> Exhale, place your palms down. Step your right foot to your left foot this time, and fold over your legs. Inhale, find your halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Place your palms, step your feet back to high plank or lower to your knees. Come forward and lower down to a halfway or all the way down. Finding your cobra on the ground or your up dog with your hips lifted and tops of the feet pushing back and down. Exhaling. Bend the knees, send the hips all the way back to downward facing dog. From there, reach your right leg back. Now exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Lower to your left knee. Take the block beneath your left knee 
And this time, turn the left toes out towards the right so your left shin is parallel, roughly to the front of the mat. From there, bring your right hand inside of your right foot, or have your block handy. Inhale, reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. Press your right inner thigh against your right upper arm. Reach your left arm back behind you, roll your shoulders back, and then thread the arm forward, up, and back, forward, up, and back. Once more, forwards, up, and back. Placing the hand down, take your left toes back to neutral, and then take both of your blocks now on the inside of your right foot, coming into lizard lunge. You can take your left knee further back, and you might even come down to your lowest setting on your blocks if you're using blocks, otherwise hands on your mat. Point the top of the left foot down. Just breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in, and up, walk your hands up, if they're on the blocks, bring your blocks higher, and walk your right foot in between your hands. From there, take your hands on the high setting of the blocks, and then we'll find a half splits. So lift your right toes off the ground, spreading them wide, lifting out through your hips and through your waist equally. One more breath like that. Shift the body weight more forward. Place your blocks on either side. Place your palms down and lift your left knee off the ground. From there, walk your left foot in a little bit and we'll find pyramid position. As you find pyramid position, you can take your hands on your blocks. Parjvasanasana, and then just wiggle and adjust your stance accordingly. Lift out through your hips and out through your waist. Softening into your feet. Activating every toe mound, clawing the mat with your foot. If you're trying to pick up or crumple a piece of newspaper into a little ball. Slowly set the left foot to meet the right foot. Set your blocks off to the side. Sitting into a mild Utkatasana, a mild chair pose, just bringing a little bit more sit into your seat. Breathing in. And breathing out. Hinge in the hips as you fold forward. And then you can step your hand, step your feet back to your high plank position, top of your push up. Exhale, lower down. All the way or half point. Find your cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your left leg back. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Lower your right knee down and have your blocks handy. Good. From there, turn your right toes out towards the left. Walk your blocks on the inside of your left foot. From there, hug the left arm into the left leg. Reach your right arm forward and up towards the ceiling. Opening up your torso towards the right hand side. Reach your 
right arm back, forward, and through. Go the opposite direction a few times. And then bring the right hand down, neutralize your right leg back, and back towards neutral, and take the top of your right foot down. Place your blocks on their second setting. Mm -hmm. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Just feel into the body. Go inward and explore the sensations that come to your body, that come to your breath. Tuck your right toes and walk your left foot in between your hands now. You can take your blocks up on their highest setting and rock your hips back. As you rock your hips back, lift your left toes off the ground, spreading your left toes a bit wider. Inhale, lengthen out through your torso. Imagine there's a bit of a white light coming up the crown of your head here as you send your hips back and away from your heels. Even think like you're pushing through your left heel and hugging your inner thighs in at the same time as you now push away through your right toes as well. Contract your pelvic floor a little bit, firming your bellies, and drawing your ribs back and up towards your spine. One more breath like that. Now on your exhale, step your left foot back to your right foot. Take your blocks off to the side. Sit back with the Utkatasana. Chair position. Here's pose. Yes. Breathe in. Yeah. Sit back into those glutes. Hello, booty. Engage those glutes a bit more. Lift your heels off the mat, coming down a little bit more. Ooh, good evening. Breathing in. Life is good. Ah. And then fold forward as the heels come down, the fingertips come down. Interlace your hands behind you as you interlace the hands behind you. Touch the heels of your hands together. Reach the arms back behind and up to the ceiling, bowing your chest, neck, and head down to the ground. You can straighten one leg and extend the other and look underneath and up towards the other side. Go the other side. Oh, yeah. That's good, nice stuff. Release your arms, shake it out. And then step your feet back in the plank pose. You're welcome to bring your knees down and stay here. Keep that firming of your belly contraction of your pelvic floor, that's what it's called. Continue pushing off of your toes as you lean more into your wrists and fingertips. 
and we're here for five. Four. Three. Three. Two. And one. Child's pose, bring your knees as wide as your mat. Big toes together. Supporting the forehead, if you cannot touch the floor, please support your forehead with a block or your hands. Walk the arms off the mat to the left, placing the right fingers between the left fingers, making a little baseball mitt, and resting the right side of your face into your bicep. back to center, walk off to the right. Let your left side of your face rest into your left arm. Walking back to center here. Back to your hands and your knees. Inhale into your cow position. Exhale into your cat. Inhale, extend. Exhale, round. And extend. Start to go to either side. And then start to move your hips and your torso in whichever direction feels comfortable for your body. if you took a certain pattern of movement. And then just letting yourself neutralize, keep the eyes closed, let your head settle. Hmm, nice sigh. Cross your ankles, rolling onto your sit bones behind you. And once you come onto your sit bones behind you, you can take your feet down into the ground. From there, bring your arms up in line with your shoulders, rolling the shoulders back. Lift your toes off the ground, lift your heels off the ground, and start to lift up more through the crown of your head as you find the basana, both pose. Options for this can be bringing your heels to touch your mat or touching your big toes together. The more challenging it'll get is when you bring your legs further in front of you and your arms further in front of you. And you can start to keep hugging in through the midline, inner thighs, big toes squeezing, and hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, you can lift the arms up higher, for 6, 5, 4, you've got it, for 3, for two, for one. Now see if you can reach everything out in front of you, keeping your gaze low as you roll yourself back onto your spine. Bending your knees and placing your feet down. Begin to rock your pelvis forwards and backwards to release anything in the low back here.
and we'll find bridge pose. Bring your hands as wide as your mat, spread your fingers nice and wide, pressing down actively through your palms. And then press down through your feet, exhale, lengthen your tailbone forward, lifting up the Setabhadra Sarvangasana bridge pose. You are welcome to interlace your hands underneath you and walk your shoulders in and bring your shoulders down as well. In and down. Keep looking up to the ceiling. Keep your throat and your neck open. And then you might even lift your heels off the ground and lift up a bit higher. Firm in the belly, lowering down the heels. And then release the arms, wiggle your shoulders up just a touch as the arms come up overhead and you lower down one vertebra at a time towards the mat. Hug your knees into your chest, lift your chin to your throat, nice little ball shape. Cross your right leg out of your foot on top of your left thigh and lace your hands around your left shin below your knee or around the back of the left hamstrings. And then often here to rock your hips and low back side to side, allowing for that to relax. If you've had a long day or you've been working at your desk, watching tons of series on Netflix and YouTube, it's okay, we're human. We also want to make sure that whatever we are feeling, we did that to ourselves so we can also undo it, right? We can be accountable for what we tighten and what we put stress into. So we can do it, we can undo it. Let your legs come over to the left as your arms come into cactus shape. And then you can take your left hand to your right thigh without torquing the knee. Opening up that right hip just a touch. Inhale. And exhale. And coming back to center. Hug the knees in towards your chest again. And then take your left outer edge of your foot on top of your right thigh, finding your version of thread the needle here on the left side. Again, you're welcome to rock the pelvis from side to side. here before we take it over to the right into a twist. Exhale, bring your arms out, let your legs fall over to the right. Let your right hand softly encourage the left thigh back. back to center, hug your knees in once again, and then taking your bolster underneath your knees, lift your hips up, take your bolster now beneath your glutes, and extend your legs out in front of you. With the legs out in front of you and the bolster beneath your glutes, you have a bit more support to let your legs extend out long as you point the toes. Then you can reach the arms up, behind, overhead, 
and extend your arms without the shoulders popping off. Keep your shoulders stable and just start to find a nice stretched out position. A little bit of a hammock shape in the body. And breathing across your hip bones, your quadriceps, your belly. Carefully bending the knees, placing your feet down, and your arms can come down by your sides. Lift your hips up, take the bolster now behind, underneath the sacrum, and reach your legs up, reversing the flow of everything in the body, down to the hips and to the heart. to roll the wrists and the ankles around, letting your limbs and joints move freely. Now bring your knees in towards your chest. Slide the hands up to your shins and keep your head exactly where it is. Flex your feet and ankles, pull your hands down your shins into a hips lifted happy baby. Keep your shoulders on the mat. Very frequently I see students lifting their head and their shoulders, trying to yank for their feet. And we need to respect our body's limitations. To not let the ego get in the way of actually letting ourselves receive the benefits of the asana, but more importantly, the non-asana as well, beyond the physical one. Do less so you can receive more. Carefully bend your knees, hug your legs together, let that settle for a few breaths. And placing one foot down, and then the other. Let your feet come together and your knees fall open wide into butterfly position, letting your hands rest on your belly. Emptying the lungs. Lift your hip 
underneath your knees. And extend your legs out for a Shavasana.
slowly begin to breathe and move your body. <sighs> Taking a yawn. Interlacing the fingers, just stretching everything out. position for a few breaths, there's no rush. And then pressing down through your hands that come up to your seat. Grabbing hold of something to sit on and tip the pelvis forward. And just letting your face relax, your jaw unclench. In our body, in our mind. physical and energetic level, have time to process and to be still from strengthening and from mobility. There's a profound effect that can be had on the nervous system in downloading all of that new information and new patterning to live healthier and happier lives. Hands can meet at your heart center, bowing your chin to your chest, thanking yourself for the effort, for the commitment, for your well-being. It is truly a gift to have a practice to share and to give to others, and to receive in return. Inhale for all. Thank you so much.